finally happened. A complete overhaul of the Starship's heat shield is coming. It's true. Elon Musk's SpaceX has just revealed a new generation Starship heat shield that is twice as powerful. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. In the previous announcements, Elon emphasized that SpaceX's current focus is on re-entry, particularly something that can make it safe. Among that, the heat shield is the biggest remaining problem. It's partly due to its vital level. Elon admitted that even a single missing tile could cause the ship to burn up in the atmosphere. Right now, we are not resilient to loss of a single tile in most places, as the secondary containment material will probably not survive. Besides that, no orbital vehicle. Even NASA's space shuttle can make a reusable orbital return heat shield in real meaning. Flight 4 marked SpaceX's first significant upgrade attempt for the thermal protection system on Starship. First of all, they intentionally left off two star bricks to test whether losing one brick was truly a disaster for the mission. Can't help but mention the location of the missing tiles is very important, given that they were located in the ship's engine skirt. If the steel there melted, it would affect the normal operation of engines, likely leading to a failed landing. Yet, the result is so surprising, Ship 29 still had an impressive re-entry. So, what do you think? Is one or two missing tiles truly a big deal? Let me know in the comments. The third point was replaced by a thinner tile than the others. This is likely to test the heat resilience of something new that I will unveil later. Or another speculation is the removal of the insulation blanket beneath the weird brick. That white mat acts as an additional insulation for the hull besides the heat shield outside. The best part is no part. SpaceX could come up with the idea of ditching that component for weight loss. The night before the historical Flight 4, Elon also emphasized the dangers of the hinge gap on the flap, allowing hot gas to go through super fast and destroy the heat shield in this area. Because if, if, if you get hot gas flowing through rapidly, that, that'll cook anything, yeah. including the tiles. So. And what happened with Ship 29's rear flap was completely within his prediction. Therefore, in Flight 5, we will see the hinge gap on the flaps to be sealed. Of course, work on the flap is not enough to perfect Starship's TPS. Thus, Elon Musk has come up with a new idea. The latest news regarding the heat shield fix was revealed during his live stream on June 10th on X. He was quoted saying, We're, we're, we're going to replace the whole heat shield on the ship. So the new uh, heat shield tile uh, is about twice as strong as the ones that were on the last flight. At this point, many immediately imagined that those two X stronger tiles would be heavier, but we wouldn't rule out the possibility that they could only need to be half as thick. Maybe that's the thin tile. This leads to an interesting thing. SpaceX perhaps did test that super strong tile in Flight 4, which we have already seen on Ship 29's hull. Yeah, who knows? The switch to the new type of tile is consistent with his previous statement about comprehensive changes to the thermal protection system, even including changes to the supply chain. This will take a few kicks at the can to solve and requires building an entirely new supply chain for low-cost, high-volume, and yet high-reliability heat shield tiles. But it can be done. And we want to put uh, an, ab an ablative secondary structure, like basically a blade of protection behind the tile so that if a tile cracks or comes loose, it doesn't cook the rocket. SpaceX tested the secondary ablative material on the fourth flight in the areas where the heat shield tiles were deliberately removed. This material is like a silicone, felt ablative, which is not good for reuse, but keeps the ship and its inhabitants safe in case the tiles fall off during or before re-entry. For those who don't know, the ablative materials work by gradually eroding or vaporizing, creating a layer of gas that insulates and deflects the heat away from the spacecraft. One of the main benefits of ablation is that it can handle very high heat fluxes and peak temperatures, up to several thousand degrees Celsius. Another benefit is that ablation reduces the mass and complexity of the spacecraft, since it does not require active cooling systems or mechanical joints. Ablation also reduces the aerodynamic drag and shock wave intensity, improving the stability and performance of the spacecraft. However, ablation also has some drawbacks that limit its applicability and efficiency. One of the major drawbacks is that ablation is irreversible and consumes the material, reducing the structural integrity and durability of the spacecraft. This means that ablation is not suitable for reusable or long-duration vehicles. 
such as shuttles or stations. In addition to the comments on Starship's heat shield, Elon Musk also released another breaking news. First of all, it's about Flight 5's potential launch date, which Elon Musk expects will be in about one month. It means Flight 5's launch window will fall into mid-July, which seems quite ambitious, because there is still a lot of work that needs to be done, especially upgrades on Super Heavy to bring it back to the launch site safely. As for the fifth flight, Musk reiterated that SpaceX plans to catch the booster with the launch tower. Well, we'll see. I think Megazilla's got a decent chance of catching the rocket. Probably, I don't know, 50% chance. Elaborating on the booster's return profile, he revealed that when the booster will come back, it will have an impact point that's out to sea. So it'll have to steer itself towards the, the, the tower with the catch arms. And, uh, and if anything is, if the booster detects that anything's wrong, it'll suicide itself into the ocean. If, if things are looking good, it'll steer over to the tower and the arms should be able to grab it. SpaceX must also work with the FAA to amend its license. I think it might take quite a while due to the complexity of the fifth launch. Musk, in his live stream, talked about his plans to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. The, that, the threshold is um, get, get Mars to the point where if the ships from Earth stop coming for any reason, that the Mars city does not die out. As for the first flight to Mars, within three years is a reasonable estimate. Since Earth and Mars only align every two years, a viable option could be to send a few ships on the first Mars rendezvous to confirm that they can land well and then crank it up from there. Then, you know, go to, I don't know, 20 or 30 ships in the second rendezvous, 100 on the third, and try to get to 1,000 ships going to Mars every rendezvous, every two years as quickly as possible, speculated Musk. According to his saying, we will need a huge amount of ships in the future. That's where Star Factory comes in. SpaceX now aims to build on the progress with its Starship program as continues work on Star Factory, a new manufacturing facility under construction at the company's Starbase site in South Texas. As it looks to use Starship to eventually make humanity interplanetary, SpaceX has stated the ambitious goal of producing one new Starship rocket every single day at the new facility. We have ships and super heavy boosters built, and either ready to launch or in testing for the next several flights with more coming off of the production line as SpaceX's Star Factory continues to grow, Jesse Anderson, SpaceX's Falcon Structures Manufacturing Engineering Manager, said during SpaceX's live stream of the Starship flight test Thursday. The latest phase of the factory currently under construction will come online this summer, giving us several 100,000 more square feet of space. Anyway, it's so interesting to listen to tons of news about Starship after Flight 4. This proves that Starship is in the right direction, so SpaceX has more confidence to take the bigger leaps, and we raise the hope that Flight 5 will come soon and that the company will achieve more success with the upcoming flight. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.